What is up everybody, Tegan here with High Point Scientific. Tonight's video we're gonna discuss five deep sky objects that you can find in the winter sky that we recommend for astrophotographers, but especially for visual enthusiasts. Stick around. Of course, the Orion Nebula is first on this list, but let's start with the constellation of Orion the Hunter. It's nearly impossible to go out on a nice winter night, look up at the night sky, and miss the seven bright stars that outline his form. Even non-astronomers can identify him. No winter list, of course, would be complete without the Orion Nebula. Easily seen with the naked eye, even under suburban skies, it's a treat through binoculars, and it is simply stunning in a small telescope. You're looking at a huge cloud of dust and gas 1300 light years away, some 24 light years across. This is where stars are born. With the naked eye you might just see one at the center of the misty patch, binoculars will reveal a few more, but the view through a telescope will easily show you four tiny stars twinkling brightly from the nebula's heart. These stars, collectively known as the trapezium, are about 300,000 years old and on a cosmic scale that is relatively young. If you're a fan of globular clusters, then you will know that the summer months provide a multitude of options for you. Unfortunately, that's not so true of winter, but there may be one globular cluster that might catch your eye, Messier 79. If we look below Orion, we'll find the constellation of Lepus, the hare. Nestled among its stars is Messier 79, a magnitude 7 globular cluster. True, it's not as bright or on the same level as, say, Messier 13, the great Hercules cluster, but if you're a globular fan, this is probably your best bet for this season. If you want to resolve this cluster into its individual stars, you'll need a magnification of at least 100. While we're in the area, we may as well check out the Crimson Star of Winter. Let's stop by the variable star, Arloporus, also known as Heinz Crimson Star. This red giant has a strong orange-red color that is quite apparent through binoculars or a telescope a variable star. It changes in brightness from magnitude 5.5 to 11.7 over a period of roughly 430 days. It should be easily seen through binoculars if you're catching it at its bright peaks. Next on our list is Messier 41. Firstly, Orion is accompanied by two faithful hunting hounds, Canis Major, the greater dog, and Canis Minor, the lesser dog. Many people know how you can find Sirius, the brightest star in Canis Major, and indeed, the brightest star in the night sky by following the three stars of Orion's belt towards the south. Almost directly to the south of that star is Messier 41, a fine open cluster that's an easy target for binoculars or even keen sighted naked eye observers. M41 appears on the favorites list of a lot of observers and it's not too hard to see why. Unlike many clusters, M41 appears quite large in binoculars and has a definite shape to it. Through a telescope, you'll see that many of the stars are blue-white in color and of similar brightness. However, there are a pair of stars just a little bit brighter than the others with one of the pairs shining with an orange hue. Our last object on this list is arguably one of our favorites. To the north of Gemini is Auriga the Charioteer, which is home to a trio of clusters that are a favorite among amateur observers. Messier 36, Messier 37, and Messier 38 all appear within the same area of the sky and are quite similar to one another. All three clusters can be seen with binoculars rather easily, but at a magnitude 6.8, M38 is the faintest. It appears more densely populated than the others, with the brightest star forming a clear X or a K pattern. Fainter stars appear to radiate out from the center, giving it the appearance of a large asterisk. We thank you so much for joining us on this quick tour of the night sky while we discuss some of our favorite deep sky objects to view in the winter nights. Of course, there are a multitude of other galaxies and nebula that you may able, be able to photograph or view visually. If you have dark skies, please take advantage of that. If you've seen any of the objects that we discussed on our list tonight, please let us know in the comments. We would love to hear about the equipment that you used or maybe you have a backstory. Maybe you traveled to Bortle 1 or even Bortle 4 skies to view Messier 36 through a 20 inch Dobsonian. We would love to hear the story behind that. So again, we thank you. If you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our future content. Clear skies.